So we're going to refresh each card in our play area and draw and resolve one enemy card. So in this case, we only had one exhausted card, so we're going to unexhaust it. And then we're going to draw a new enemy card. And oh, so it is not a minion. It is one of Dimitri's upgrade cards. So we've mentioned that we have tactics that stay in play. The boss sometimes has the same thing. So this is fully loaded. And so from now on, this card is going to activate after Dimitri activates during each enemy phase. If unengaged, Dimitri deals one fighter within five spaces of him three general damage. <laughs> oh my gosh. So don't forget, general damage is the damage that uh, hits all defense tokens first and only gets through if you have no defense tokens. Otherwise, shuffle the topmost gear card in Dimitri's discard pile back into his deck. We don't have any cards in the discard pile yet, so that part's not going to hurt us. But he's going to be shooting people within five spaces of him for a bunch of damage every turn. We are pretty far away, but our friend who just hit Dimitri is about to get some payback, I think. Now, uh, you'll note there is an interact, which again would use up my action for the turn. If you are adjacent to Dimitri, discard one card you control to discard this card. Card I control would be something like Aura Bakuden, a tactic that's in play. So... This card is pretty nasty, but for an expensive choice, if I can get next to Dimitri and get rid of one of my cards entirely and spend my action for the turn so I'm not attacking as much, I can uh, disarm him and get rid of this weapon. So I'm not near him yet, but I'll, I'll have to see if that's a choice I want to make. Okay, so we've done my threat phase. I didn't get a new minion, which was nice, but now Dimitri is a lot more dangerous. So we're doing my act phase. I'm going to do my action first to try to defeat Anastasia right next to me and maybe play a card as well and then I'm going to move to try to go help my friend. So let's try that out. As I said, Anastasia is already engaged with me so I'm ready already to uh, use Channel Tempest. But since I gain one power for each Tempest card you control, I'm going to go ahead and play my other Tempest from my hand which was Riding Lightning. That says, before each of my attacks, I can discard one power to gain plus one die for that attack, and I get a free power every turn. Pretty awesome. So, I'm going to go ahead and play that and do my attack. So I've now got two tactics, plus my basic character attack. So I've done my play card, Riding Lightning. For my action, I'm going to attack two dice. After this attack, gain one power for each Tempest. Now I'm going to gain two power instead of one. I'm sorry, I do have one damage and one power over here. So I'm going to do my attack, and I am going to go ahead and use the Riding Lightning, because Anastasia has two life left, and i got to do two damage, so I don't want to take any chances. So I'm going to discard the power I have to get plus one die for the attack and roll three punch attack dice instead. All right, let's see how this goes. Nice. So I got three attack, and she has no punch defense, so this grapple defense isn't going to do anything. So that takes her up to five life, so she is defeated. Additionally, I got a guard, and I was doing a punch attack, so I'm going to get one free punch defense on my guy for this attack. So I'm going to go ahead and discard Anastasia, so her card will go to the discard pile next to the enemy deck. And additionally, whenever you defeat a minion, you get a free loot card. And these are the same loot cards that I'll get if I ever run over one of these crate tokens on the map. So here I get a flashbang grenade. At any time, you may discard this card to discard two defense tokens of your choice from an enemy engaged with you. So this will help me to uh, finish somebody off who's pretty well defended or maybe uh, weaken some of Dimitri's defenses instead. So not a bad card to get. And by the way, you can have any number of these loot cards in play, and they're each one use. And in general, you can use them whenever you want, unless uh, the card says differently. All right, so I took my play card to play Riding Lightning. I attacked. After this attack, gain one power for each Tempest card you control. So I'm getting my free punch from that guard result I rolled. And additionally, I'm getting two power which is going to help me power Riding Lightning and also gets me closer to flipping to my charge side and getting an awesome attack. So feeling pretty good about the turn so far. Okay, I still have my move action left. I'm going to take Anastasia off the board. Oop, didn't mean to remove Dimitri as well. And I can move uh, three hexes. I'm going to try to get towards the red guy, but not get so close to Dimitri that he shoots me. But I do want to get towards that loot token. So I'm going to go ahead and go three down here to try to get that next turn. If this guy's still alive, maybe I can revive him. We'll uh, see how it goes. 
I will note that sadly my Aura Bakudin is not in range, so I cannot attack Dimitri with my one die, even though it's only general damage and would have just discarded one of his defenses. So now I'm in my React phase, and I activate each card in my threat area, but uh, I, <laughs> I defeated Anastasia, so I have nothing in my threat area, so I'm f looking pretty good. I'm going to go right to my draw phase. I draw one card, and I'll flip this card to the enemy phase. But a quick note, Riding Lightning, I get one power at the end of my turn. So I'll be at uh, three power now, halfway to flipping for my special ability. And I get one more card. This is Sky Strike, an attack. Kick attack. If you are unengaged, you may move up to two spaces and attack for two dice. Then you may discard a number of power, dealing with target one general damage for each power discarded. So nice little moving attack there. Okay, so we're going to the enemy turn. Now we've got two things to activate. So first, Dimitri gains two random defense tokens and attacks each fighter engaged with him. Luckily, our friend ran away, so he's not engaged. And we get a kick and a punch. So Dimitri's got a little bit of every type going on now. And then, unfortunately, we do is fully loaded. He is unengaged, and uh, our friend is still within five spaces of him, so he deals him three general damage. So we ignore the otherwise text here, and he's just uh, shooting the fighter in the arena with us. So our friend, before we can help him, he gets flipped because he has no defense tokens, and any amount of damage, according to the stage rules, flips these guys to their inactive side. So he no longer counts as a fighter. He won't get targeted by enemies, but he will, unfortunately, get targeted by Dimitri for destruction. We end the turn with the stage turn. We activate each thing, and then we'll draw another card. Call the weak. The boss moves three spaces toward the nearest inactive objective, which unfortunately our friend is. If engaged, he picks it up and can only carry one objective at a time. So this was still advancing three spaces, so Dimitri's going to go in as direct a path as possible without any turning to get engaged with the guy. And then he's going to pick it up. It becomes active, and it's going to go on Dimitri's card. Additionally, we move the A New Challenger card to be with Dimitri in the enemy phase area as well. So he's not going to get to activate to fight or gain a defense token this turn. Instead, during the next enemy turn, we're going to roll two dice and see if Dimitri executes this guy, unless I can do something to help him before that. So to show what it looks like, here's the new enemy area. We've got the objective token being carried by Dimitri and waiting to get activated during the next enemy phase, but not this turn, thankfully, so he won't get executed yet. And now Dimitri's gonna be trying to turn his fully loaded gun onto me instead, so <laughs> whoopee for that. The final part of the stage turn is drawing a card, so... Sound advice. Any fighter may discard two defense tokens to put this card in their fighter play area, otherwise discard it. Now, I sadly only have one defense token, just this little punch defense, so I cannot take advantage of this. Which is too bad, because this would stay in my uh, play area, and allow me to use it every turn to move an objective token one space, and get them away from enemies and stuff, which is really useful. It really is a bummer that I didn't have any defense tokens to, uh, to actually get this. Okay, so, unfortunately I just have to discard this for no effect. It does not help me out at all right now. Okay, we're on to stage three, and uh, we flip this over, go back to our threat phase. We're going to refresh each card in our fighter play area. We didn't even use Aura Bakud in last turn, so there is nothing to refresh. And we're going to draw one enemy card. Oh, it's another Anastasia. This time it is the yellow one, and we're going to spawn her in the closest spawn point uh, near us. Somewhat luckily for us, she is literally right next to us, so we can attack her without having to move at all. And I do want to note that currently Dimitri is one, two, three, four, five spaces away, so if I don't move at least one space, he's going to shoot me with his gun, which I certainly do not want to let happen. So just looking at this turn, I'm probably going to try to attack Anastasia, maybe even defeat her if I could do enough damage, and then uh, get away from him. Although, uh, I really want that loot token, so... We'll have to see what the best way to play this is. And sorry, I should have mentioned there, Anastasia comes in with one grapple and one kick defense, so I've got her ready to defend against my attacks, unfortunately, but she has no defense, 
against my punch attack, which is what I like to see. Okay, so actually I forgot I had a card in my hand called Khan Katsusen that lets me move an enemy toward me and then attack everybody adjacent, a gauge with me. So I think I'm going to change my turn a little bit and try to hit both the boss and Anastasia. And, uh, God, even to potentially get rid of that gun if I'm lucky. So let's see what happens. So first of all, I'm going to move to set up this little combo. And I do go, I'm going to get that loot token because you know I want that. So we're going to go one, two. I don't have to end my turn on this. I just have to move onto the space. Three. So I get a loot card. In this case, a turkey platter that will uh, discard this card to heal three damage. So going to keep me alive a little bit longer. Delicious. And you'll note now that I'm next to Anastasia, ready to hit her. And I'm three away from Dimitri, which is kind of just what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and use Kanet Susan, and I'm going to move one enemy up to three spaces toward me. One, two, three. Well, let's put him here. And now I get to attack for two dice every enemy engaged with me. Now something to note, I can use uh, one power to add plus one die to the attack. So I'll roll three dice instead of two. And it's important to note that when you do area of effect attacks like this one where I'm hitting both of them, bonuses apply to uh, both um, both attacks. So you just make one roll. So here I'm going to get uh, kind of two bonus dice for the price of one by spending one of my three power to boost my two dice attack from Kanetskusen, which uh, you'll note is a punch attack. So I'm rolling three punch dice against Dimitri and against Anastasia. Okay, so Dimitri has one... Uh, punch defense. Anastasia has none at the moment. I'm going to roll my three dice. And I get three hits plus a guard, so not too bad. Anastasia is going to take uh, three damage straight up, so she is one from being defeated. I really wish I had rolled a critical hit, and that would have uh, given me the extra damage I needed to defeat her outright. Dimitri has a punch defense, but only one. So instead of three damage, he's going to cancel one of them just for him, not for Anastasia, and take uh, two damage instead. So he's at four damage out of 20. So pretty good little start there. And additionally, for the guard result, I'm going to get uh, one more punch defense. So that gives me two punch defense overall. Now, Kanetsusen is a attack card, so I'm discarding it. It's not hanging around like the tactics cards I've used so far. And... Unfortunately, I'm next to Dimitri, and I'd really like to use my action to get rid of that gun of his, but I really don't want to have both Anastasia and Dimitri next to me, and all I have left is my action. Well, <laughs> not all I have left, because I have my Aura Bakuden that could do one die, but ah, it's general damage, so Anastasia, I'd have to do three damage to break through her defense token, so that's probably... Ooh, ooh! Um... I have the loot card Flashbang, discard two defense tokens from an enemy engaged with me, so I'm going to discard that, remember this is one time use, so I'm throwing a grenade at her, I get to take away both her defense tokens, and now if I do even one general damage, it's going to go straight through and finish her off, and this is just exhausting Aura Bakudin, so I still have my action to disarm Dimitri if I so choose. So, yeah, let's do this. And you know what? Um, let's go ahead and use Riding Lightning's bonus of one die again. Spend a power, so I'm down to one power at the moment. Now I'm going to roll two dice. Just don't want to take any chances. Nice! So I've got two damage, and she has no defense to block it, so it's going through. So she is defeated. Take that, Anastasia. And I defeated a minion, so I get another loot card, which in this case is... A martial arts magazine. Choose yourself from an adjacent fighter. The chosen fighter gains two random defense tokens. Well, gosh, I'm going to probably use that in a second because Dimitri is not happy that I'm standing right next to him. And additionally, I did get a defense result. Now, when an attack is general or direct damage, so it does not have a type in and of itself, it is uh, your choice of what type to get. And generally, it's good to spread out your defense. So I already have two punch tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and get a uh, kick defense this time to boost my defense a bit more. And then I am going to go ahead and use the martial arts magazine before Dimitri gets a chance to attack me. And I'm going to gain... 
Oh, gosh. Two more punch defenses. That's the one thing I didn't need more of. But, so it goes. I am now uh, very strong against punches. I've got four punch defense tokens and one kick defense token. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. And the great thing is that now I can use my action still to either attack Dimitri or uh, try to disarm him. So I'm a little bit torn here. I really want to use my action to interact with his gun, but I have to discard a card I control, which means I have to lose my Aura Bakuden, which is damage every turn and really useful, as you just saw a second ago. Or I have to discard my Riding Lightning, which gives me a chance to gain extra power every turn and gain bonus attack dice. So... I'm going to have to go with Riding Lightning, because basically that's plus one die every turn anyway, even though this is ranged. And, yeah, I just like the plus one power every turn. So, as my interact, because remember I've moved and I've uh, played a card, but I've not done an action yet. I'm going to do an interact action. I'm adjacent to Dimitri. I'm going to discard one card I control, so not from my hand, but one I control, so that's gone, to discard fully loaded. So I'm going to go and put that with the discarded Anastasia's. And Dimitri is back to just being a basic punching guy uh, who is unfortunately right next to me. So that's not going to be too much fun. And just to show you the board again, I remove the Anastasia. I'm right next to Dimitri. And uh, there's no allied fighters on the board right now. The only one in the game. The red one is being carried by Dimitri and might be about to have his uh, neck snapped or his back broken. Uh, the humanity. So I moved, I played a card to pull them to me and attack. I didn't exhaust to finish off Anastasia, and for my action I did an interact to disarm Dimitri and his gun. I'm back to my react phase, but again, I am, I am rocking it with these uh, weaker Anastasias, which are quicker to defeat. I have nobody to activate, so all I do is draw a card, hoping for a tactic since I just lost one. And now I got an ability, drawn from the sky. Uh, discard defense tokens of your choice from each enemy within four spaces of you, then heal damage. Not that great. I don't have a lot of enemies on the board. This is not that useful if I'm only doing it for a single enemy. So, really not the card I wanted, but uh, we'll, we'll try to make it work. Okay, now we're going to flip. Go into the enemy turn. So we're going to activate the enemy cards and see if Dimitri finishes this poor guy off. Oh, and sorry, don't want to forget. I do get one power for riding lightning, which brings me up to two power overall, since I blew a lot uh, making attacks last turn. So in Dimitri's play area, we've got him to activate, and then we're going to activate the challenger to see if he's hurt. So Dimitri gains two random defense tokens, and then attacks each fighter engaged with him. And then each fighter must discard a grapple defense token or Dimitri retreats. And I don't have any grapple defense tokens, so that's certainly going to happen. So his uh, defense, he's getting two more grapple defenses himself. So he's very strong against grapple. That's not when I want to attack him in. And then he's going to attack me for four white dice. Lord. So I roll the four white dice. And this is the first time I've actually had defense when I got attacked. So I might get lucky here. And I've got <laughs> three kicks and a punch. Now, when you defend, it works a little bit differently than with enemies, and it's actually pretty cool. So I cancel one kick with this defense. Sorry, that was a kick. And I cancel that with one of my punches. And what you do when you block an attack is you get this as power immediately. So suddenly I've jumped from two power to four power, only two away from my... Uh, my charged attack. And I've still got a bunch of uh, punch defense, but unfortunately no more kick defense. So Dimitri is going to do two more damage to me. I'm now at 17 out of 20, but I got this little turkey platter, so I'm going to be able to heal myself pretty quickly. So I'm in a pretty good place still, I think. He's taking more damage than I have. I still have some defense, and I'm very close to being charged up. So I'm uh, feeling pretty good so far. Okay, so now we're back to our uh, other card, New Challenger, and we're doing the enemy play area effect, which again says roll two enemy dice. If both results match, this objective is executed, which would bring him one-third of the way to winning the match. And we got... Oh, nice. The guy is still alive, and I can still save him, which uh, I might do next turn. We'll have to see how things are looking. But yes, my friend is not dead yet. Okay, so we're back to the stage turn. Uh, remember, the stage rules don't have an activate on it. It's just interact and some other rules. 
Call of the Week, there is no inactive objective. He's carrying the only one, so he's not going to do anything there. And so all we have to do is draw a sudden death card, a new one. Assistance required. Each fighter may discard one card from their play area. If less than one times the number of player cards were discarded this way, this card deals the active objective nearest an enemy three general damage. Well, there is no active objective, so I don't have to discard anything. But let's see, there's an alternate text underneath. If no active objectives are in play, search the stage deck for an objective card and put it into play. Oh, man. So just when I'm worried about Dimitri destroying this first guy, I'm getting another one. So I'm just going to go through, find the first guy I can, the yellow challenger. I'm going to put him into play. Although note that drawing a card happens after activation, so he's not going to activate this turn. But uh, next turn, people might be attacking him, and he might uh, run over and uh, punch people too, hopefully in a way that will help me. And looking on the board, this has got literally probably the worst possible result I could have gotten. This guy popped up right next to me and Dimitri. So I'm going to have to stay here and tank some damage for him if I don't want Dimitri to just hit him immediately. So, huh. That was not a great result. I'm not happy about that, but we'll see how things go for our next turn. Okay, we're on our fourth turn, and uh, we're back in our threat, threat phase. We don't have a uh, Aura Bakuden to refresh anymore, so all we're going to do is draw one enemy card. And, oh, we get another minion, and this time not one of the snipers. This is Boris. Six life, two dice attacks, so not that dangerous. Starts with two punch defense, which is bad for me, because as you've seen, most of my attacks are punching. Let's see what he does. A fighter adjacent to this enemy cannot move unless they discard one grapple defense token and place it on this card. This is terrible. This guy is going to hold me in place, and I have no grapple defense to run away. And when he activates, he advances three spaces towards the nearest fighter and attacks. He gets plus one attack if he didn't have to move. So if he's already next to you, he's three dice. This is kind of the worst thing that could have happened. Look at the board. This guy is going to spawn right next to me. I'm next to him and the boss. The guy I want to defend is right next to us too. We're in this huge melee of death. And I can't run away to not be hit by both of them for a ton of dice. So I'm going to have to do something tricky here or be in really big trouble. So just to remind you of my card options, I've still got Riding Lightning, which... Could move me a lot, but I don't have any grapple defense to actually move. So I've got Drawn from the Sky, which will get rid of defense tokens from two people next to me. And Heal Me Some. That might actually be worth it now that I'm uh, next to two guys with defense tokens. I've got Sky Strike that lets me move and attack. And then I can discard uh, tokens to do extra damage. Uh, but I can't move. And I've got Eye of the Storm. Attack 2, I'm going to discard any number of power to get an equal number of defense tokens of my choice. That might be the best option, because I've got a lot of power. But don't forget, when I gain defense tokens, if I block with them, I'm going to gain power back anyway. So it's not like I'm really losing the power if I use Eye of the Storm. It's more like I'm uh, saving it up as defense to get power later. So yeah, I might, I might use Eye of the Storm, which is Grapple. And that could even get me a grapple defense, so maybe I can move away. I might use Eye of the Storm on Boris and then do my regular attack as well and just hope that I uh, do a lot of damage or can get away from him. Yeah, let's try that out. So I'm going to do Eye of the Storm on Boris. Uh, two attack dice. I can use Riding Lightning to make it three, and let's do that because Boris has no grapple defense anyway. So that's going to give me three dice... And then I'll be able to spend as many defense tokens as I want, or sorry, as many power tokens as I want to get defense tokens of my choice. So Boris has two punch defense, but no grapple, so this is going to go straight through his defenses. Oh, yes, got a crit, although that guard result is not good. So I've got a crit, so I'm just going to roll another die. Oh, yes, come on, come on. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, ah, it was just a regular hit. Okay, still a really great result. So I did four damage and got two grapple defense tokens, which means that I can move away from Boris by uh, giving him one of my grapple defenses. I'm not sure if I want to do that, though. Maybe I just want to defeat him because I just did a lot, a lot of damage. Um, 
So I'm going to mark uh, four damage on Boris. He's got two life left. Mm. It's kind of a hard call. Because I can boost my, my basic attack to three dice by spending one of my power. But I still have to, to get through two defense. Two punch defense, which is what my basic attack is. So it's not great odds. But anyway. Um, remember my ability to let me discard as much power as I want. I'm going to save one power just in case I want to boost my basic attack. And I'm going to discard these other two. And I'm going to get, uh, I think, kick defense. Because again, you want to kind of spread it out. So I've done my card play for the turn and damaged Boris a good bit. He's got four damage, needs two more to be defeated. But he's got punch defense. And I'm next to two enemies. And I was thinking I might stay there to try to uh, block Dimitri's attack on the neutral guy. But Dimitri actually says that he attacks everyone adjacent to him. So... I'm going to try to punch Boris and hopefully defeat him if I get lucky with my roll. And then in either case, I'm going to run away. And thankfully, I have the grapple token I need to give to Boris to let me run away from him because he's trying to grapple with me. So I've got a two dice attack for my regular action. I'm going to spend my last power to boost it up to three dice. And Boris has two life left, but two punch damage, so I need to get four hits out of these three dice. So if I don't get some crits, then I'm not going to make it. Ah! Three hits, which is a decent result. Takes away both of his punches, and then does do one extra damage, but he's got five out of his six. Ah, man. So, I don't defeat him, which is okay. I'm going to run away, but he's probably going to chase after me and hit me, so... Not ideal, but uh, certainly better than a lot of misses in this case. And don't forget that as part of my basic attack, I get one power for each tactic I control, which is only one since I trashed that other one. But uh, still, looking pretty good. And now I'm going to move. I can move through other fighters on my side, but I can't move through the enemies. And uh, I'm going to try to go to the right and not get too far away from the yellow guy. Um, but also working towards uh, the loot token over there to try to pick that up if I get the chance. And that's the end of my act phase. Now I do my react phase. And I've got Boris to activate. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have noted I have to spend one grapple, give it to Boris, to be able to escape from him. Now it says he advances three spaces toward the nearest fighter and attacks for two white dice. And he gets plus one attack if he didn't move before the attack. In this case, I actually kind of get lucky because Dimitri is going to hit this yellow guy anyway. But now instead, Boris will stop there and hit him with his attack. I don't even need to roll. The yellow guy has no defenses. And again, remember the white uh, dice never miss. So this guy is just inactive, which means now Dimitri won't attack anybody. So kind of worked out the same, but it means I didn't get hit. And I can probably finish off Boris next turn. So that's mostly a good thing. Although I will say I kind of wanted to get attacked to uh, turn some of my defense tokens into power. And now that's not going to happen. So... Oh, well, I might need to defend these guys a little bit better. Okay, and last phase of a turn is the draw phase. So I will draw a card. Let's see what I get. Another tactic. Good. Shockwave. So again, it's unique. I can only have one. It's a punch attack. And it gives me an alternate action to use. Attack for two dice. This attack may target an enemy up to three spaces away. So it's a ranged attack. Before this attack, you may discard up to two power to have this attack target one additional enemy for each power discarded. Oh, that's great. So for two power, I can do a two dice attack against uh, three different people. And then with uh, Riding Lightning's bonus, I can discard another power and make it a three dice attack against all three people. So pretty cool power there. I'm probably going to play that next turn, both to get the boost from having another tactic and also to have a really cool option available to me. Okay, now we flip the card and we're on the enemy turn. Dimitri's going to gain two random defense tokens. Let's see what we get. A uh, double kick. So he has no punch defense still, which is kind of great for me since punch is all of my attacks pretty much that I have access to right now. Then he's going to target each person adjacent to him, but because the uh, only person adjacent to him is an inactive guy, he won't attack. And now I activate the injured red fighter that he's still holding on to. And I roll two dice again, and if I get doubles, that guy is executed. Ah, my luck is holding. That's great. 
And he can only hold one guy at a time, so he's not going to pick up the yellow one who's injured. He's just going to stick with holding uh, the red fighter over his head. Okay, so coming over tier... So activate for Call of the Week. The boss would go toward the nearest inactive objective and then pick it up. He's already next to the nearest inactive objective and he can't carry more than one at a time, so that card basically does nothing. And New Challenger actually does do something. You'll note it says uh, if this objective is active, it advances three spaces and attacks. It's not. Otherwise, it gains one random defense token. So this guy's kind of sitting on the ground crying, but he's going to get one punch token. Now, it won't help him while he's inactive, but if I take this interact option, basically spending my action to help this guy up, then that defense will still apply. It might be a little bit harder for him to be knocked down again. And I end my stage phase by drawing a card. Oh, man. Assistance required. Okay, each fighter may discard one card from their player. If less than one... Oh, that's right. This one does damage to an active objective, and there aren't any right now, so that's, that's good for me. If no active objectives are in play, and they aren't, because don't forget, yellow is inactive right now. He got hit. Oh, gosh, I'm going to put another one into play? That is not ideal. I don't want to have more of these guys to defend. Okay, we're getting green now. And uh, the enemy needs to execute three of these guys to win. Now, I've been lucky so far, and he hasn't actually finished off the red guy, but I've got yellow on the board just injured, and now I'm going to have the green one floating around too, all a little bit worrisome because uh, I don't want him to be able to win too easily. Going over to the board, you're going to see green is all the way over here, which uh, I kind of wish I'd gone the other way now so that I would be able to defend him. I'll, I'll have to work my way over there and try to let these guys not get to him. Although, again, he's unfortunately overconfident. He's going to be charging towards them and trying to attack anyway. So we'll see if I can keep him alive. I didn't do too well with red or yellow.